Super Junior is back with an amazing music video and I just kind of lose it from it. Sometimes it's a little hard to understand everything that's happening because of all the fanboying and fangirling you're doing if it's your bias group. You know that. <laughs> the whole purpose of this video is to convey the following message from one listener who doesn't have a musical background to another. And that message is, what makes Super Junior black suit so good? Whoa, calm down! Money's being thrown everywhere! People are dressed up and probably pissed because nobody paid the cable bill so they can't watch any K-dramas up there! It looks like this is some type of auction or where just some rich people gather to drink and just laugh at us commoners. But what's really clever about the approach is that since it's in reverse, you have no idea what's going on when the song starts. If you think about it, you just have that piano that plays, and then all of a sudden you see money everywhere, drinks flying, rich people flying everywhere, you're like, what's happening? It's not till after that first dance break in their mystery dance area that you start to piece together the story. And speaking of that dance scene, oh my god, are those vans? Please. Don't try to appeal to us common folk. You are a legendary person. If you can afford an almost $900,000 suit, you can spend the extra $200 and buy a nice pair of perforated detail leather Chelsea boots. Come on. So now after the dancing, you can see that the suit has been stolen. That $900,000 suit is now gone and now everybody's freaking out, pointing fingers, trying to figure out who exactly took the suit and why. Throughout the video, you see these scenes that are playing forwards in time and backwards in time. And you have to piece together when these events happen. You have to string together when these events happen to figure out, okay, who has stolen the suit and why did they steal the suit? And throughout the video, you get these hints of maybe who caused it or who done it. Like this guy, okay, I see you. Just because you're part of Super Junior means you can't steal the suit? Yeah, with your little smirk. The music video is called Black Suit. That's the song name. But at the same time, they made the subject of interest in the video, the Black Suit. Sometimes music videos have nothing to do with what is going on in the lyrics or teasers. EXO's call me baby. But it really lets you enjoy the song even if you're not Korean. You understand that, okay, it's about a black suit and I see a black suit, so is it about someone stealing the black suit or am I the black suit gonna steal your heart? But you still can jam to the song and hear all of Super Junior's intensity and the harmonizations and the instrumentations that we were just talking about. And then, we get to the actual scene of the crime. Lights go dim, we see this Korean Catwoman come out of nowhere and steal the suit. And by stealing, I mean she touches the glass and she does like this weird ET thing or whatever and just gone. And that's really it. You see some of the members of Super Junior look up like, oh, it was you. And then that's all it was. And now you have to try to piece together the scenes of, oh, were they trying to piece together at the five o'clock and the 5.30 scenes? after this happened or was this before setting up the auction? What's really funny is you actually get a glimpse of this girl at the, I think it's 2.53, with her just sitting back down during the fight. Like, I'm just gonna pretend nothing happened and I'm just here for the free booze, that's why I'm here. And she's just way too hammered to fight so nobody would incriminate her. She, you know, she's kind of falling over the wall. She only had one drink, it was non-alcoholic, nobody knows. The video alone was able to tell a story in a very clever way where it's piecing together scenes that are some played in reverse, some that are out of order in order to let you know who stole the suit? It doesn't give you a resolution of if they found her or not, or whoever was perpetrated, but it just sets up this mystery, and shows what happened during the mystery, and how this person got away with it. Now you layer that on top of the song, and what the lyrics are about, and you could probably try to interpret some interesting things from it. The music starts off with this orchestral or jazzy piano just right from the get-go. And it's done in such a way where it can lead anywhere. It's almost like these keystrokes that are done in the beginning are to let you know to pay attention for these next three or four minutes of what Super Junior has to offer. And with how it starts and how modern music is, it can go in any direction. Right after the piano, it goes into this synth sound effect that sounds like something you would hear from Super Junior from when they started. That's not a bad thing either, it's showing that they still have their roots. It's really low-key and subtle, and isn't supposed to detract from any of the vocals of Super Junior. At the 50 second mark is where you start hearing these pianos go off again. So right before the chorus starts, you hear a little bit more of those jazz instruments start playing in, but nothing too intense. They start going off in the background as the synthesizers start picking up pace, but not more than is needed. It doesn't really change the emotion or feeling of the song. So it's always that you're listening to their voices first, but you have these synthesizer sound effects and the jazz sounds as a backseat to supplement it. For the verses right after the first chorus, you can hear that it sounds similar to the earlier verses from before the chorus. The only difference is now we have a little bit of that jazz peppered in. Go back and listen to that second verse. You'll actually start to hear more and more. During the second pre-chorus, you'll actually hear the horns added in. If you listen to the first pre-chorus, you won't hear that at all. And now you're getting the idea that, okay, some of these sounds are now blending together to be played at the same time that you didn't hear earlier in the song. So I guess at this point, right after the second chorus, you would expect it to go even more intense with maybe the jazz instrumentals as they're leading into their next verse, but they kind of take it for a twist. It doesn't sound like the earlier verses, and it has a more smoother take to it. You hear it getting more and more intense, and you actually hear the emotions in their voice kind of go all 
higher and you feel the song a bit more. You feel what they're trying to convey and how smooth they're trying to be. As their vocals intensify, so does the instrumentation to keep up. It doesn't always want to get dwindled out by their voices where it's not even important to have them, but at the same time it's not trying to get ahead of itself. It's always right below them, so you still have that extra layer and extra depth to this track, which is a perfect way to close the actual musical part. So if you follow the musical structures of this song, you can see that the way they have it is they have a main verses where the singers are singing, they have that chorus, and then they do it again a second time. The second time, the only difference is, is we're adding in more of those jazz elements. And the third one is where they're going with their ending. They're building up to this just final climax of letting the song end with a very emotional and very high energy take. Because it's one of those mysterious sounding but high energy hype songs. It's not one that you're supposed to be quiet to, it's one you're supposed to dance to for sure. They start off so smooth and they smoothly harmonize throughout the entire track. Listen to every verse and pay attention to the harmonization. It's, it's just littered with it. I like to call most of these harmonizations the little cherry on top harmonization. These members of Super Junior are so talented, you wouldn't need to have any instrumentation either. You could just hear their voices at that part and it would still be just as captivating. And what I've realized is another thing the harmonizations do is they help convey a little bit more emotion than the quiet verses do. They're supposed to convey just being very mysterious and smooth and you know having that aura of coolness but the harmonization adds a little bit of cockiness to it. It adds a bit more of like a, not immature, but a little bit more childish take on how you're supposed to feel when you're feeling the emotions of this track. And this continues throughout the track until about the two minute and 40 second part where now the main verses are getting more and more intense and now you're no longer having the harmonization. For the first 60% of the song, they were kind of keeping it down low, making sure that you're kind of coming in close, listening to them get close, and then they just kind of blast you away. But it completely matches the feel of the song. Throughout the entirety of this track, it's supposed to be very smooth, very quiet, not supposed to get too much attention, as if you were at some really fancy party and you don't want to be screaming, but you still want to try to be the life of the party or the person that everybody looks at. And it helps keep the tone of the track. It leaves the power to the actual chorus and that conclusion, which really draws you into the chorus and conclusion. It's almost like they do that on purpose, just because if you weren't a big Super Junior fan, it's now something a little bit different than the last two minutes you heard, and it keeps you hooked to the end of the song. Makes you curious of, oh, okay, if they're able to do this, what else can they do? What other potential do they have? And at the same time, it's showing the old fans that, oh wait, no, they still got it. They still got the power in their voices. They were just keeping you waiting. And that's really clever because it's Super Junior's way of keeping you on that music video, just watching, listening, absorbing everything the entire time, start to finish. It's about a smooth man dressing up real smooth, wooing a really, really pretty girl. Now when I say the main idea, it doesn't really do much justice to this track because a lot of songs are in that category where it's supposed to be some person wooing this other person using all of their dancey moves and their vocals. I have the English lyrics here that I wrote down and I'm just gonna read them to you. So I know they're English, but I think it's probably the same exact kind of meaning in Korean. <clears throat> Before your beautiful silhouette disappears, I wanna deeply dig in, aiming for a chance to captivate you. Oh God, what? This isn't about a guy trying to win over a girl by looking attractive, but by looking captivating and mysterious as a gentleman approaching a lady with a fine drink, walking up to her in his very fresh black suit that was cleanly tailored, you know, gotten the last day, regardless of price, he still looks good in it. It's the only way he can compare and match to her. Like she's already just so high in status that he has to put on this black suit and act as smooth as possible to even be recognized by her. I mean, remember, Super Junior are a bunch of gentlemen. They aren't little kids or teens anymore, or even in their early 20s. They are gentlemen who are looking to impress a fine lady, not woo some high school bop. They are trying to impress some mighty fine Korean woman. This music video pieces together everything in such a way that attracts you to it regardless if you're an old fan of Super Junior, a new fan of Super Junior, someone who can speak Korean, someone who can't, but it draws you to it. So much is going on in the song that if you're really wanting to pay attention, you're gonna have to watch it multiple times. Not just for the video, but for listening to these little audio cues that you wouldn't have caught the first time because it's just so intricate and there's so much going on that your body just kind of ignores it the first time. And the song itself is such a smooth song done by Super Junior that when you pair it with the video, you get this awesome track that looks like it is actually supplementing some mysterious burglary K-pop movie with like a bunch of K-pop stars. And if you know the lyrics, it kind of puts this ironic spin on things where this guy needs needs this black suit to, in order to impress this girl, but it's so expensive and it disappears from the case. It's, it's supposed to be like a metaphor that the black suit isn't something you put on, but it's something right here. It's right here. It's your demeanor. It's how you, how you act, how you talk to people. You want to be classy. You don't have to wear classy. 
These gentlemen are veterans in the K-pop industry, and they definitely knew how to pull K-pop fans that were old fans, new fans, ones who speak English only, and ones who speak Korean as well, together again to show that they still are center stage. And maybe help some newer fans uh, look at their older material, because it's still great. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, let me know down below. I really want to continue this as a series. And until next time, peace. I gotta go and find myself a black suit to look fresh in, if you excuse me. Now, I'm gonna get myself a fresh new black suit with some bands to accompany it.